decisions can come down to who's in the room and who's speaking up. Public input like this is really important. There's this feeling of empowerment. They're there to serve us, right? That's our government. We put them there to represent our wishes and our values for our community and for our community's future. Welcome. We're back with Brent Lyles, Executive Director of Friends of the San Juans, which was formed by citizens in the late 70s to help San Juan County adopt its first comp plan. In our first segment with Brent, he gave a breakdown of the comp plan, its history, and touched on how critical this core document is to all in San Juan County, which is why making public comment is so important. So in this segment, Brent is going to share some tips on how to do that effectively. Welcome, Brent. I'm looking forward to hearing how making public comment to the county can be less intimidating than it seems. Thank you so much, Heather. It's really an honor to be here, and I really appreciate that the San Juan Islands Community Network is making space for this conversation and making time for it. I'd like to start out with a land acknowledgement. Friends of the San Juans respectfully acknowledges and honors the fact that this beautiful place we call home is comprised of the ancestral lands, waters, and natural resources of the Coast Salish peoples. And those Coast Salish peoples have been caring for and stewarding the San Juan Islands and the Salish Sea since time immemorial and continue to do so. And we honor their inherent Aboriginal and treaty rights that have been passed down from generation to generation. Brief background again, real quick. The county's comprehensive plan or comp plan sets goals and priorities that guide the county's growth, including what can be built where and and which forests or ag lands or shorelines will be protected against development, how the county responds to tourism and the climate crisis and, and much, much more. With its current comp plan update, the county is making decisions now that will guide its actions for the next eight years, for the next 10 years, for the next 20 years. The stakes literally could not be higher for the future of our islands. So the process looks like this. The county staff and the planning commission take each section or element of the comp plan one at a time and discusses it. They discuss the goals and policies that are in each section of that document. For the land use section, for instance, they'll talk about what can be built where and protections for certain areas or types of habitats and so on. The Planning Commission, which is a group of community volunteers, then sends their recommendations to the County Council. The Council, in turn, deliberates again on each of these sections. And and they are the ones, the County Council are the ones who make the final decisions about the language that goes into the comp plan. Then that language from the comp plan guides the county's creation of its regulations and laws and its programs. Each of these steps, planning commission, county staff, county council, each step offers an opportunity to weigh in, whether that's at a regular meeting or Sometimes they have public hearings on specific topics. Over the course of the summer and fall of 2021, and likely into the winter, there are regular opportunities to get engaged in the county's comp plan process by submitting letters or speaking up at planning commission meetings or county council meetings, or by sharing information on social media You can advocate for policies that protect everything we all love about the San Juan Islands. But let's be real, this process is super complicated and it can be very intimidating um, and confusing too. You know, how do you know what they're talking about each month or or how do you know that you're going to get listened to? So that's why we're here. That's why we're doing this second segment about the county's comp plan to provide some tips and advice. So with the county's comp plan, there are essentially three ways to make your voice heard. Write a letter to the San Juan County Council or the Planning Commission or both. Number two, show up at Planning Commission meetings and speak during public access time. 
And those planning commission meetings are on the third Friday of every month at 8.30 a.m. Right now, they're online via Microsoft Teams. And probably in the near future, they're going to be going to a hybrid in-person and Microsoft Teams uh, scenario. So write a letter, planning commission meetings. And then the third is show up at the San Juan, San Juan County Council meetings and speak during their public access times. Council meetings are held on most Monday and Tuesdays. So I've got some tips for you. First of all, let's start with writing a letter. So if you write a letter to either the planning commission or to the county council, my first tip, and this is really important, keep it simple. The planning commission members and the county council members have to read a ton of material for every meeting. And sometimes that includes like lengthy legalese sounding letters from us. So for your letter, if you get to the point quickly and state it clearly, you are more likely to be effective. Number two, if you can submit your letter at least a week before the next scheduled meeting. That way the county staff have time to send it out to the planning commissioners or the county council members and give them plenty of time to read it. Third, if you're basing your letter heavily on a news article or a scientific study, feel free to append that article or study at the end of your letter's PDF, uh, in addition to providing a link, so that the, the folks who are reading it don't have to go searching for it. Like, give it to them right there. And then finally, and, and a lot of people forget this, you'll send in an email right? And uh, we're going to provide that email address on the webpage with this video. When you send that email, you'll attach your letter to that email and ask for confirmation that your letter has been received. Um, you know, sometimes emails go into spam, right? Make sure you get some confirmation. And if you don't get it, follow up with county staff and make sure they got it. My next set of tips is about speaking in person. And what I mean is showing up to speak at either a planning commission meeting or a county council meeting. So first off, no matter how tempting it is, don't ramble on. Don't like lecture the planning commissioners or the county council members about climate change or whatever. Like climate change, right? The reality is that these folks actually already know a lot about climate change. Keep your comments simple and to the point. You know, be sure to include why you care. That's really helpful for them to hear that you're passionate about something and that, and that it really means something to you, and that's helpful to them. But just don't go on and on about it. You have three minutes. So that's my second tip. You have, you have three minutes, and I usually write out and practice my comments ahead of time to make sure they flow well. And, and also to make sure that I'm not going past that three minute mark. A third tip is don't do it alone. You probably have friends who care about this stuff too. You know, work on your comments together. Um, show up at the meetings and, and, and each of you plan to say something. When you put together what you say, each person should have a slightly different angle. Um, you know, it's, 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 when you when you decide not to do this alone, you know, it's it's good to have fellow companions in this quest, right? I've talked about tips for writing letters, and I've talked about tips for showing up at the planning commission or county council meetings in person and speaking. And I'd also like to share some tips that just kind of apply to both of them. Uh, the first one is kind of a hard one, but it's important, which is plan your comments based on the items that are on the agenda for that meeting. In other words, if the um, county council is discussing transportation issues or housing issues, that's not the right time to come in with comments about energy use or something like that, unless it's really relevant to what they're talking about. If to, in order for your comments to really be effective, it helps if they coincide and that there's alignment with what they've got on their agenda that day. Now, there's a couple of things that, that can help with this. We're going to provide 
in the uh, on the web page for this video, we're going to provide a couple of links. One of those links will be the planning commission agendas. Another link will be the county council agendas. Take a look at what's coming up and think about what comments you have for those sections. And with the comp plan, often they're talking about the language within one of the elements. And in the planning commission's agenda, there'll actually be links to that language, or there might be links to a county staff report about what they'll be talking about this week. Those are great ways to find out what's on the agenda, what's being considered, and where you can plug in. My second tip is remember that the county council, not the planning commission and not the county staff, the county council is the body that actually makes the final decisions. And, uh, you know, so for instance, you might really want the planning commission to reopen the vision statement for the comp plan, for instance. But, you know, once the planning commission has reached out to county council and said, hey, should we reopen the vision? And the council says no. The planning commission's hands are pretty much tied at that point. County council are the final decision makers. Tip number three, be respectful, always. Remember that the county council and the members of the planning commission and, and the county staff, these are good people. They're trying to do their jobs the best they can. And, and heck, the planning commission are even volunteers, right? If you are respectful and thoughtful in how you present what you have to say, that'll go a long way to make sure that you are listened to. So those are my tips. I hope they're helpful. You know, whether you decide to write a letter, speak at a meeting, or simply share some information on social media, please know that your voice matters. I was just talking to one of our county, county council members yesterday, and they said that often decisions can come down to who's in the room and who's speaking up. Public input like this is really important. Here at Friends of the San Juans, we've gathered together a small group of passionate people who we can count on to write important letters, attend critical meetings, and share relevant information on social media. If you'd like to receive those calls to action, send me an email at brent, B-R-E-N-T, at sanwans.org. We'll put that email address in the video description too. Email me and I can give you more information about that group of people that's staying engaged with us. Um, I, can, I can help, I'm helping that group keep tabs on what is on the agenda for the coming month and so on. Have you had any uh, testimonials from anyone who never made public comment and then started doing it and, you know, got into it? I have mentioned my comp plan action team, which is my group of people who is really interested in, in weighing in and making sure their voices are heard. And there's a number of those folks who came into this a little bit nervous and not totally knowing how this all worked and all that. I mean, gosh, the software alone is sometimes a sticking point, right? Um, but, but once you've done it, and, and like I say, having those companions to sort of do it with you, I mean, it really makes a big difference. And, and once you do stand up and speak or submit your letter, like there's this feeling of empowerment, right? Like, hey, I did something, you know, and I, um, I, I, think it, I think it's so important to get public input on this public process, right? I think I'm trying to think of a better way to say that, but but like that's what this process is for is is so that our community can weigh in and and share what they're thinking with those planning commissioners and with the county council members is there any value in not just submitting a comment one time but investing yourself over time and like you said looking at the agenda checking when that subject is going to be discussed again and maybe even reaching out to staff or planning commissioners outside of meetings and really being consistent and showing them that you are invested in whatever it is that you're concerned about over time. It makes a lot of sense for people to not just show up once and really to be engaged in an ongoing basis. And certainly that's something that's true for us at Friends of the San Juans, right? You know, 
this comp plan process, this update process has been going on for years now. And as I mentioned, the process is that the planning commission works its way all the way through the comp plan update. And then the county council works its way all the way through the comp plan update, right? And so let's say there's something in the housing section that is really important to us. We're going to bring it up at the planning commission and we're going to bring it up at the county council. We're going to find the opportunities to bring that set of values to the conversation or, or bring that set of priorities to the conversation. And, um, you know, I, I, that's how things move, right. Is, is, you know, this sort of pressure that's always there saying, Hey, you know, there's a better way to do this, or there's a better, um, you know, way to, to respond to the climate crisis or whatever it is. Like we need to just like keep up the pressure and, and make sure that, the planning commissioners and county staff and county council are really hearing that from the community. They need to know that that's important um, to their constituents because they're there to serve us, right? That's our government. We put them there to, to represent our wishes and our values for our community and for our community's future. And you say this summer and fall and possibly into winter is critically important period of yeah. time, after which point things will become solidified with the comp plan. Yeah, the, um, the, the, the planning horizon for the comp plan is a 20-year planning horizon, right? So when they're doing like the population, uh, you know, predictions for, the, for, the, for, the, for use in their planning models, they, they look at 20 years out. The cycle of the updates is every eight years. And so we're going to be reopening the comp plan again in eight years. And kind of going through this process again, you know, what's changed? Um, has the pace of development changed? Have the impacts of climate change changed? Uh, and so on. Like there's, you know, there's, it's, it's valuable for our county to, to look at those goals and policies periodically and make sure that they still match the county's current needs. Got it. Well, we will hopefully be getting some updates from you periodically to see how the process is going and hopefully get some more engagement from the public. Thank you so much to the San Juan Islands Community Network for making space for this information, for hosting me to do this segment with tips about engaging with the comp plan. Now, this is really a big deal for our county's future, and um, I'm honored to be here and to be able to play a role in that. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. All right.